So the video you just saw at the beginning of me cleaning my bathroom was all shot on the iPhone 14 Pro in a vertical format. I had to clean my bathroom anyway, so why not make a cool short clip out of it? Making engaging and great looking videos on your phone has never been easier. Almost everyone has access to a smartphone, but not everyone knows how to make the most out of it when filming. What's great about using your phone to make videos is that you can capture unique angles and perspectives that are much harder to achieve uh, with traditional cameras. And in this video, I will give you five useful tips on how to get the best angles with your phone. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, more to them later. For those who don't know me, my name is Bennett, nice to meet you. And if you don't already know, my job is to help you crush your mobile video game. So I thought it would be a fun idea to film myself while I clean the bathroom and challenge myself to find the best angles. Now the tips I will show you can also be applied when shooting horizontally. I decided to shoot it vertically because it's a different medium and most people like to watch their content vertically on their phones. And I wanted to experiment with this format, which is actually a lot of fun to do. So why is it important to get the best angles? Having creative and interesting angles in your videos makes them more engaging and pleasing to watch. It breaks away from the traditional flat, eye-level footage we are used to seeing. Different angles can make a scene look more dynamic. So let me give you those five tips for getting better angles. So my first tip when starting is to use what you have. However, if you have the extra money, I highly recommend you invest in a tripod. The one I'm using is the Pro Edition by Sandmark, but you can use really any tripod. The advantage of using a tripod is that it keeps your phone steady and allows you to adjust the height and position of your camera. What I like about the tripod that I'm using is that it allows me to get very low shots and place it close to the ground or also get high shots to you know, create more interesting perspectives. With a tripod, I can also focus on getting a good composition that helps tell the story of my video. Especially if you're alone and are filming yourself, having a tripod will greatly help. Help. If you don't currently own a tripod, as I said, use what you have. You can find a flat surface or use items like books and boxes to get your desired angle. There are other tools available that can enhance your videos and help you get the shots you need, such as the suction cup that you can use to attach your phone to a mirror or a wall. Now, it's not necessary to have one of those. There is a workaround to it. You can use gaff tape, for example, to stick your phone to a wall. So what I'm trying to say is that if you don't have the gear, don't worry. Try to be creative and use what you have. And if you can invest in some gear, then a tripod is a good starting point as it belongs to the essential equipment and will allow you to get most of the shots you need more easily. Now, if you're interested in the products I'm using, I will link them in the video description below. Now, my second tip is to experiment with different angles. The beauty of using a smartphone to shoot videos is that it's lightweight and small, which makes it fit into tight spaces. Take this shot, for example, where I place the iPhone below the sink. What makes this angle interesting is that it's unusual. You normally wouldn't see something in that way. Or let's look at the mirror scene. You only notice the mirror once I spray on it, giving it a little bit of a surprise effect. Or the first person view shot where I use the ultra wide angle lens and place the iPhone beside the spray that feels like a first person shooter game. You can also get very low angle shots, making the subject look more dominant. And because the iPhone is water resistant, I can create this shot where water splashes onto my phone. So these are just some of the creative angles I've come up with and I encourage you to explore what angles work best for the type of video you're doing. Now, the possibilities are almost endless. Try to think outside of the box and avoid shooting everything from eye level like a tourist. I say that all the time, but you need to get this into your head and break away from this amateur way of shooting. This process of experimenting with different angles is supposed to be fun. You should be enjoying it, and the more you enjoy it, the more creative you will get. If you take the time to try and experiment, your videos will stand out from the rest. <sighs> Sorry about that, I just got this package. This is for another video. Okay, I got my coffee. Now, my third tip is to capture the scene from multiple angles. If you don't know what a scene is, a scene is basically the action taking place in your video. So me cleaning the sink, for example, was a scene. And to create that scene or the action of me cleaning the sink, 
I used multiple shots. You could use one shot to film the same action. However, breaking it down into several shots, meaning using wide, medium, and close-up shots will result in a more interesting video because it gives the scene more context and lets the viewer feel more immersed in the story. And what I see beginners do a lot is capture everything wide because they think they will have everything in the shot that way. But by simply getting closer with your phone, you can show the details of a scene, which unlike wide shots, make the viewer focus on one specific thing. And you probably want to know how clean I got the sink, right? So remember to capture the scene from multiple angles, not only wide, but also medium and close up shots. Now, before we continue, let's get our builds paid and talk about our sponsor of today's video epidemic sound if you're looking for the freshest music epidemic sound is here to bring you the best of all worlds it's a platform packed with amazing tracks from top musicians worldwide oi i think you pronounce it that way being my favorite one and they make finding music for your videos super easy you can use their search function and filter by mood genre and more and as a content creator this is some good stuff you can even find similar tracks to the ones you have already discovered and if you don't want to download the full track you also have the option to download stems which are individual parts of the song you can download the melody the instrument bass and drums which is pretty cool because this allows you to mix and match and do whatever you want with the track what about sound effects you ask yes they have this too and in a huge variety oh and by the way no more worrying about copyright issues either since their license covers you Mm, mm. And now comes the best part, guys. You can try their music for 30 days free using the link in the video description below. And if you use the code Bennett50 at checkout, Epidemic Sound is giving you an additional two months for 50% off. So make sure to take advantage of this exclusive offer as it's only valid until March 31st. You can thank me later. So big thanks to Epidemic Sound for supporting this channel. But let's now continue with our fourth tip, which is adding foreground to your videos. By simply placing something in front of your lens, you can create depth. Take this shop for example, it would look too empty and boring if I didn't place the cleaning supplies close to the camera. Doing this will add foreground and depth to your video. And by placing those cleaning supplies around the camera, I can create this oval shape, which helps focus the viewer's attention on the subject, creating a frame around me. Now in this shot, I used the door frame to add a little bit of foreground, but you can also add things that are lying around in your house, like a plant, book, whatever it is to create a more three-dimensional shot. And not to mention this way you can add some shallow depth of field to where the foreground is blurred out and the background is in focus. Now my last tip is if you're using an iPhone and have an Apple Watch, you can use your Apple Watch to monitor your recordings. If you often film yourself, this feature can be extremely useful. With the camera remote app, you can easily frame yourself and see what the camera sees through the screen on your Apple Watch. That way you can use the standard lens on the back of your phone, which generally produces a higher video quality than using something like the selfie camera. Now, sometimes the selfie camera would work. It comes down to the type of shoot you're doing. I use the camera remote app quite often when filming myself or when I need to place my iPhone in unique areas where it's up close to a wall. It makes it really difficult to see uh, what's on your screen. Furthermore, it also helps me set my composition more easily as I can position myself better and generally saves me more time. But don't be discouraged if you don't have an Apple Watch as it's not a must have and many shots can still be a achieved without one. Now, here's a bonus tip for you. The best way to get better at filming with your phone is to practice. So here's an exercise for you. Try to film a scene of yourself at home doing an activity. It can be reading a book, doing the laundry, preparing coffee, working out, cooking a meal, or whatever it is. Get multiple shots of the scene and try to be as creative as possible with your angles. Remember the tips I've mentioned and apply them to your video. And make sure to share your results and tag me on Instagram at Bennett Grazer. I would love to see your final results. Now, if you want to learn more guys on how to film cinematic and professional looking videos with just your phone, make sure to check out smartphonefilmmaking.com. The link will be in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Keep crushing it. And I'll catch you guys the next time.